When you look at this table, how much Singaporeans save? By age of 40, 255,000. Do you turn red? Because maybe you're thinking, I'm age 35 now, and I barely have any savings now. How do I get to 255,000 by age of 40? The other situation, I'm age of 45 this year now, and I barely have 30,000 in my savings. It's just so depressing look at these numbers. Or on the other hand, do you think this number, 255,000 by age of 40, that's chicken feed. I mean priority banking, private banking really, and I have way more than that. Today, you're going to get answer. Why are these numbers unreliable and why do we have so different levels of savings? The table I show you just now is actually mathematically correct. But before I share with you what's wrong with it, I'll first like to agree with what's correct, which is the moral of the story. Personal finance is personal. Everybody's circumstance is different and everyone has different financial needs and wants. We all come from different backgrounds also. Actually, the truth is that if you're watching this now, based in Singapore, it's very likely that you are already blessed. I brought my family to Kanchanaburi, Thailand, just a couple of months back, which is actually a rural area outside of Bangkok. I had the chance to ask the chauffeur, have you been to Singapore or not? And as expected, the answer was no. But the next question really got me shocked. Then have you traveled anywhere or not, like north of Malaysia, Kedah or Penang? His reply was also no. He has never brought his family to an overseas trip before. Holidays is an alien concept to him, even though most of the time he's chauffeuring people on holiday. But I digress, let's cut back to what's wrong with this figure with the table of how much Singaporeans have saved up. If you were to look deeply into the calculation, there are a few glaring areas where the concept is wrong. Firstly, this table calculates for a median take-home pay and from day one, a 31.1% savings ratio. This assumption by itself doesn't quite make sense because when your take-home is $2,083, it's actually very difficult to save 31.1%. Whereas at the age of 30, when your take-home is $4,000, it's actually quite easy to save 31%. Using $4,000 as take-home and 31% savings level, the amount that you can spend per month on expenses is more than $2,700. If you have no mortgage, no kids, no car, $2,700 per month is actually quite a lot to spend already. The second concept that's wrong from this calculation is that it assumes that the money is saved up. There is no investment rate of return. Let me show you the impact of investment rate of return on the amount that is saved up. If we use 4% rate of return, which is actually very easy to achieve. Singapore savings bonds and T-bills already give 3 plus percent rate of return. REITs and bank shares, they give more than 5% dividend yield. So using 4% rate of return, the savings accumulated will be close to $300,000. By the age of 40, the savings accumulated will be close to $450,000. Almost double that of someone who has just saved up with 0% rate of return. Then if we extrapolate this, by age of 50, the person will have close to a million dollars net worth instead of cash saved up with no rate of return. So the moral story from this is always make your money work harder, correct? Because over a period of time, that will make all the world of difference. But in today's case, I want to address a few situations and help everybody become a bit more financially aware. Let's address the first situation. You see red when you see the savings table, how much are Singaporeans saving? I want to share with you some advice. Don't take it personal, but instead, take personal responsibility on how to make long-term change with this feedback. I've seen many in your situation, and I would like to share with you that 80% have an income problem. 20% have an expense problem. Let me explain a bit further. If, for example, you have nowhere near this amount of savings, 80% chance your take-home pay is pretty low. Just now you mentioned, saving 31% on a low take-home pay of 2000 per month is difficult. If you have children to feed, mortgage to pay, all the more likelihood you are living month to month. What you need to focus on is how to side hustle a bit harder, bring in extra income. The second, you need to aim for dual income, especially if you have a family. That's why it's always important to marry correctly. Beyond that, I would suggest, use your HDB smartly for upgrades, for grants, Something I've covered before in previous episode, why I'll try to ballot for a second BTO. I've seen firsthand on how you can benefit a family. 
Next, after you've broken out from this month-to-month cycle, you need to very quickly aim for this first $100,000. Charlie Munger said before, the first $100,000 saved up is a bitch. Whether you get there at age of 30 or age of 45, it doesn't matter. You need to work non-stop, you need to eat budget, by hook and by crook, get to your first $100,000 because it liberates your mind. Failing to get to $100,000 means that you either have a financial literacy problem or you have a determination problem or you have both. So this is candid feedback that hopefully you can take action with and it's something I shared before in this How to $1 million ebook and I'll leave links below for you to purchase and follow on. Then in the next situation, you're earning well but you belong to this 20% with an expense problem. Then actually your situation is quite much easier to solve. Gradually wind back on your personal expenses and your lifestyle inflation. Usually awareness that the situation needs change is just all it takes. I've had this private client who had no savings before age of 35. Now age of 42, things are looking pretty okay already. In just 7 quick years, he's cut back on big purchases, started budgeting accurately, and by doing regular investing, he has now more than 6 figures pot. That sits outside his bank account where he can't redraw it very conveniently. Coming to here, if you have questions, leave them in the comment sections. And as always, smash the subscribe button. Follow me on this journey to reach 100,000 subscribers and impact more Singaporeans in their financial journeys. Now let's move to the other situation where you think age of 40, 255,000 safe, that's chicken feed. I mean priority banking, private banking, and have way more than that. Let me explain why you think so and what is your typical profile. Now also, if you are aspiring to get to this stage, Listen up because this could unshackle your mind in terms of how you think about finances. If you think that this is chicken feed, 255,000 by age of 40, it's very likelihood that you belong to this category of 10 to 20,000 in terms of monthly income. Some fields in medicine or legal work or sales job or management role will easily put you in this income bracket. If your income is 20 to 50,000 per month and even beyond, likelihood you're in some field of medicine, you're in some field of legal, you're working with a big tech firm or you're in a C-suite leadership position. That probably explains your profile. And at age of 40, it's quite likely you have climbed up to that already. No surprise because some of our ministers are in this age group. Drawing back to 10 to 20,000 per month income, if you think about it with bonuses, saving up 5 to 10,000 per month is actually very possible. Along the years, if you have moved your savings, built up a proper portfolio, poured some money to property, both for which appreciated, it's very likely age of 40, you have $1 million in investment assets already, not including your home. More than that, if you work with an American firm and you've gotten stock options along the years, that could also have appreciated and brought in more net worth to your equation. How much really depends on which firm you work with. And let's use the most rosy of examples. If you work with the big tech firms, a 250000 stock RSU that you've earned, if you work in Google, will now have been 750000 250000 if you work in Apple, would have been a million dollars really. If you hold on to them well, it's very easy to become a multi-millionaire. This is the truth because I've worked with clients from all segments and I can share with you how things really work. So with that, let me now plot what really happens in terms of net wealth between the two spectrums of someone who sees red when they see median income is that level, or someone who thinks that's chicken feed. Let me now plot for you to see. Over on the left hand side, if you have been living month to month, you may only have 30,000 or less. Job becomes tougher from the age of 45 onwards, that's why the savings could drop, or very commonly, money is lost because there is a temptation to take shortcuts, and money is deployed to the wrong places. This left hand side is close to poverty in Singapore's situation. Now let's flip the equation to the right hand side. You would see it's very possible by age of 30 to build 200,000. Age of 35, 750,000. Simply because pay has started to climb really fast. Age of 40, 1.5 million dollars. Simply because there's usually one round of property already and there's even more stocks accumulated. 1.5 million by age of 40 of investment assets. That is not even the extreme that could really describe someone in the high income space. Beyond that, age of 45, 50, 55, 60, all depends. It depends on income. Some industries go south and the person's income is never the same. It depends on longevity of career. Some who reach this peak 
choose instead to go to FIRE, financial independence retire early, whereas the others continue to climb in the corporate ladder and make way more income. It also depends on the investment rate of return moving forward. Some make mistakes and plateau, while some become really proficient at investing and become ultra high net worth. I do a lot of retirement planning. As always, if you are keen to look for someone to help you plan out your retirement because you have more than 1 million on net worth, I have enough experience to show you clear cut where are areas that are blind spots and where I can value add for you. So again, look for links below to reach me for a fee-based consulting work. These two are extremes. Most of us will hover somewhere in between. But coming to today's rounding, I think moral story is still important. You are likely blessed already, so don't complain. Do your best and play your cards correctly because reaching retirement need not be multi-millions. You can go there at your own figure and as always, if you'd like to find out exactly how to calculate how much you need for retirement, check out this previous tutorial I have. I use a free calculator to show you exactly how you can build step by step. If there are Sana for me and see you there, take care as always. Goodbye.